if you were worried that you were going to be subjected to some really boring shit in this episode, prepare to be surprised. Greetings, fellow worker slaves, podcasting at 128 kilobits from the Fortress of Squalitude, not far from the Redneck Mecca. This is the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. I'm your host, Tucker. Professor Fuzznuts is curled up in my arms, demanding attention. Buddha is sniffing about the place. Ash and Lord Squeakington are curled up in my room. Yes, it's a podcast hosted by a guy and his cat. Get over it. This is not going to be a Nag Hammadi Library episode like I thought, because I stumbled across a whole bunch of Gnostic texts which were discovered well before the Nag Hammadi Library, so that's what Skullbeard and I will be reading in this episode. Next episode will be a news episode. The first section we read is Marcion's To the Galatians, followed by the Acts of Andrew. And believe you me, this is not the dry kind of stuff we've been reading in the past. Patreon supporters got, as their bonus material this month, nearly an hour's worth of outtakes of the commentary Skullbeard and I had, laughing about the shit we were reading. In the past, we've joked about how the stuff we've read has a lot of sexual subtext. Well... In this section, it seems to be all text. It being the first of the month, I, of course, need to thank all of the Patreon supporters. Your donations have covered the cost of my electric bill, as well as the hosting costs for the show with a little bit to spare. So, no matter what I wind up working next month, I have a lot less to worry about. I appreciate that considerably. All save the commentary about the various events which have been plastered all over the news for the next episode because if I get started on them now we'll never get to the good stuff. I will say that to my Australian listeners that I hope you're safe and I have been posting links to organizations dedicated to helping both people and wildlife during this disaster so that us Merkins can donate. And if one of you happens to hit your prime minister with a brick and needs a place to hide in the U.S. or elsewhere, feel free to hit me up. I'll be happy to put you in touch with plenty of people willing to hide you. In fact, I'll go out on a limb and say that most of the people listening to this podcast, regardless of where they might live, would be willing to do the same. Now... As to what I have been doing this week, that I've been off. The answer is not as much as I would have liked, but I can say that I have made some progress on a few things. Patreon supporters got some specifics as to what I was doing and why. I will say that if you want to read a book about someone who had a massive amount of influence in American politics to the point where they were aiding people to become president and actively influencing U.S. policy across six... God, Fuzznuts, why did you do that? (sighs) Patreon supporters got some specifics as to what I was doing and why. I will say that if you want to read a book about someone who had a massive... Patreon supporters got some specifics as to what I was doing and why. I will say that if you want to read a book about someone who had a massive amount of influence in American politics to the point where they were aiding people to become president and actively influencing U.S. policy across six administrations, then I just... then I know just the work you need to read. Think Fox News during the current era, but on steroids, and you will have an idea of what I'm talking about. God damn. Ah, fucking sleeping pills I took are starting to kick in. Uh, I took them because, well, my sleep cycle is out of whack since I've been off work for so long. Okay. 
that's enough of my blathering. Let's get to Skullbeard and I reading shit that you didn't know existed. Paul, an apostle, not of men, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ, who raised himself from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I marvel that ye are so quickly changed from him that called you in the grace unto a different gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm, boy. But though we are, we, but though we or an angel should announce to you a gospel contrary to what ye have received, let him be accursed. Why would you be cursed? Whatever. Oh. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For I. <laughs> <laughs> For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brother, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, <coughs> but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. But when he was pleased, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me unto his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I should announce him among the nations, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Well, I would think that would be the thing you'd want to do. Uh, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Cephas and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So he went to Syria and Cilicia, wherever that is, but not to churches in Judea. Okay. Yeah, and he only saw um, Jabus' his brother. Um, Armenia. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, need a map. Yeah, southern Anatolia, but it was part of uh, Ar Armenia um, and Turkey. Okay. That kind, of, <laughs> yeah, that kind of fits. Then, 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, ooh, that's a key figure, and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the nations. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. <laughs> Gee! <laughs> Hey. <laughs> How many grown men do you know if you come up to them and say, I need to cut off the end of your dick, are going to say, sounds like a plan to me. No. <laughs> and the because of false brethren unawares brought in, <clears throat> who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Jesus Christ, that they might bring us into bondage. Kinky. Not for an hour did we yield in subjection that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. For those reputed to be something, whatsoever they were, not to me makes a difference. A person God does not accept, for to me they conferred nothing, but to the contrary, having seen that I was entrusted the gospel of the uncircumcision, and... <laughs> Show title! <laughs> <laughs> the Gospel of the Uncircumcision, yes. 
There you go. Write this one down. <laughs> and having perceived the grace that was given me. Oy vey. Uh, Shit just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, let me just copy that um, <laughs> over so we don't forget it. And then I'll get to the next section. <laughs> Man! Uh, I bet you that'll blow up the downloads for this episode. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh. It'll also probably delay next month's Patreon payment, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Uh, but it'll be worth it. James and Cephas and John, those reputed to be pillars, the right hands of fellowship, they gave to me and Barnabas, that we should go unto the nations, but they under the circumcision. Oh, you're a braver man than I am, is all I got to say about that. <laughs> but when Cephas came unto Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that came James with the nations he was eating. But when he came... He withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. <laughs> oh. This is going to be one of those homoerotic texts, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, yeah. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in, this, in so much that Barnabas, who was also carried away with their simulation but when i saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel i said unto cephas before them all if thou being a jew livest after the manner of gentiles why compellest thou the gentiles to live as do the jews we who are jews by nature and not of the gentiles oh so it's got a hint of anti-semitism maybe yeah um for if what I cast down, I build again, I constitute myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> and the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the God and Christ who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not frustrate the grace, because blue balls suck ass. Mm -hmm. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died for nothing. Well, I could have told uh, you that. If you're not sinning, Jesus died for nothing. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you're right there. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, who is this, Paul? Marcy on to the Galatians. <clears throat> okay, sure. Oh, senseless Galatians. That's a great way to start off a letter. Who hath bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been openly portrayed? This only would I learn of you. Receiveth ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? <laughs> uh, I'm sure they are. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, learn that the righteous by faith shall live, for as many as are under the law are under the curse that accursed is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Okay. In the law, no one is being justified, but the law is not of faith, but the one who does these things shall live in them. <laughs> okay. Christ has ransomed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, as it is written. Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Okay. okay. So well, it's not a good idea to be uh, crucified? What? Yeah. <laughs> Could have fooled me. Yeah. 
uh, that we might receive the blessing of the Spirit through faith. For all of you are children of the faith. 315. Yet as a man, I speak. So what, I have no idea what the fuck that 315 could possibly mean. Uh, I think it skipped around. They missed a piece. They missed something. Because mm-hmm. it goes mm-hmm. verse 14, verse 26, and then 315? Mm-hmm. Eh, it doesn't it's, seem like that's the... the, the no. You know. It doesn't meet their, meet their format, and there's no footnote for it. So. Who knows? When we were infants, we were held under the elements of the cosmos. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son to ransom them that were under the law, that we might receive sonship. Wait a minute. Isn't ransom against the law? Whatever. Yeah, so it was usury, but hell. Yeah, well. Yeah. And because ye are sons, he hath sent forth his spirit into your heights, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. There's a dancing queen or something like that kind of joke in there, and I'm not going to make it because I was never a big Abba fan. I know. I was going to mention something, but I'll just bite my tongue. <laughs> Well, G. Gordon Liddy was a big Abba f- is a big Abba fan, so you know, <laughs> it might ought to make people rethink their taste in music. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Since indeed then ye were in bondage to those who, not by nature, are gods. Ooh, so they're artificial gods. Simulated gods. Hmm. Chock full of preservatives? Inorganic gods? There we go. GMO? Yeah. Since indeed then ye were in bondage... Oh, I already read that. But now, having known God, or rather, being known by God, how do ye turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which again anew ye desire to be in bondage? Days ye observe, and months, and times, and years, and Sabbaths, so I suppose, meager suppers, and fasts, and high days. I am afraid of you, lest somehow in vain I have labored unto you. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Uh G. Gordon Liddy. (laughs) No, wait, Timothy Leary. There we go. And... When you said Daisy are observe, I thought you were almost going to make a Daisy Daisy. <laughs> no. <clears throat> By the way, the guy, Claude, whatever his name was, um, who voiced Hal was Canadian. Oh, I'm not surprised. And we're all up in your entertainment industry. Yeah, well, and the thing I. All your funny guys? Most of your funny guys? Canadian. Canadian. The thing I. It just hit me. I don't think he ever says the word about. Because that's, 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 yeah, that's the one word that almost all of you trip up on, is about. No, no, we say about. You say a boot. Uh, no, it's not a boot. <laughs> not a boot, not a boat. It's about. It's a boot. <laughs> okay. Um, ye know how through weakness of the flesh, I preached the gospel unto you at the first. Um, (laughs) Man, it's hard not to read subtext into this. (laughs) Really hard not to. (laughs) And your temptation, which was in my flesh. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I know, I know, I mentioned it. It's, it's, it's there. It's just loaded with that. Ye despised, not nor rejected with contempt, but as an angel of God, ye received me, even as Christ Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Man. I know. It's uh, just dripping with it. Yeah. 
Where then is your blessedness? <laughs> For I bear witness to you that if possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and let me skull fuck you <laughs> and have given them to me. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> Just think how much more of this we have to read. So your enemy have I become speaking truth to you? you? They are zealous of you, not rightly, but to exclude you they desire. Who? Zealots at all times. And not only when I am present with you. Okay. My little children, of whom I travail again until Christ be formed in you. So I guess he's your side dick. Um, Something like that. I don't know. Tell me, ye who under the law desire to be, the law do ye not hear? For what? as it... Oh, you got another one? Yeah, I goofed. Oh, 20, yeah. Yep. But I was desiring to be present with you now and to change my voice. For I am perplexed in you. Tell me, ye who under the law desire to be, the law do ye not hear? There's some good pickup lines in there. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> you want to be under the law, baby? Mm hmm. No, I was thinking the, uh, but I was desiring to be present with you now and to change my voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For I am perplexed in you. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. All right. For as it is written that Abraham had two sons, one of the bondmaid and one of the free woman, but he from the bondwoman after the flesh was born, and he from the free woman was through the promise, which things are allegorized, for they are for these are two covenants, one indeed from Mount Sinai unto the synagogue of the Jews, according to the laws, generates unto bondage. But the other generates above all powers, power, lordship, and every name that is named, not only of this eon, but also in that to come, which is the mother of us. So then, brethren, not of the bondwoman are we children, but of the free. Woohoo! <clears throat> so... We can frolic together, naked. <laughs> In the freedom wherewith Christ made us free, well, then you, you, if you're free, that means you have your freedom, and okay, whatever. Stand. Okay, I, I gotta stop you right there. Are you familiar with our previous uh, Prime Minister, Jean Chrétien? <clears throat> Very he little. Lips, little sawed off French guy, talks out the side of his mouth, can't speak English or French, but managed to, to mangle both. <clears throat> okay, so there was a protest in, I believe it was Vancouver or Victoria. Sergeant Pepper, who loved to pepper spray protesters, hosed down a bunch of people and they asked the Prime Minister about it. He was like, Pepper, I like that on my plate. When you have a proof that is proven because of proof, is proven. Oh, he just, oh, some outrageous turns of phrase that in the freedom wherewith Christ made us free really reminds me of. <sighs> fucked. Yeah. Stand fast and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Wow. You don't have to do the dick stuff anymore. You're, that's a, well, not only that, you don't gain anything by it. No, you lose the tip. <laughs> and that means you can't say, hey, baby, how about just the tip? No, you can't. You know what the leper said to the prostitute, don't you? No, oh, keep the tip. Yep. <laughs> but I testify again that a man is circumcised a debtor he is to do the whole law um <sighs> what <clears throat> so um 
I'm just thinking of some like um, Tom of Findland police bondage porn I've seen. I don't know if you're familiar with Tom of Findland. No. Um, he was Finnish. And he um, drew lots of gay porn cartoons. Okay. And it was a lot of it was heavily bondage influenced and all the men were very large, muscular types, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <clears throat> genitals as well. And they, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, police um, figures in his cartoons. Um, I'm thinking village people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let, let's put it this way. Finland's guys were bigger than Schwarzenegger at his peak bulk. Yeah. And uh, if you want proof that Finland may be one of the coolest places in the universe, um, they put his artwork on his stamps. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty progressive and forward thinking of them. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that, that was... In the 90s, I think they did that. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think they had giant wangs on the artwork, but they, um, uh, they definitely, I mean, you knew who it was. And it, mm -hmm. they didn't hide his signature or anything like that. But um, even if you weren't familiar with his name, you just seen his artwork, you knew who it was. And. Even if you were unfamiliar with his artwork, if you had any inkling of what it was like to be a gay man, you knew what the subject matter was. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So you got to do the whole damn law. Yeah. Exempt is he with the brand mark of bondage. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't think this is subtext anymore. I think it's text. <laughs> <laughs> Whosoever in law are justified from grace, ye have fallen. For we of the Spirit by faith await the hope of righteousness. Ye did run well. Who hindered you that the truth ye should not obey? Okay. This persuasion comes... Not from him that calls you. A little leaven corrupts the whole loaf. Uh -huh. I have confidence in you that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubles you shall bear the judgment, whoever he is. But I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why yet am I persecuted? Then has been abolished the scandal over the cross. I would even that they castrate themselves, which throw you into confusion. <clears throat> yeah, no, thanks. I'll pass. Yeah. For you unto freedom were called brethren, only use not freedom for an occasion of the flesh. Okay. But by love serve ye one another. <laughs> I wonder this got cut. <laughs> uh, yeah. For the whole law in you is fulfilled. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, an ex of mine, um, <laughs> would talk about needing to meet herself in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if ye bite and devour one another, <laughs> take heed that ye not be consumed of one another. So he likes a spitter. Yep. <laughs> or somebody who snowballs, I guess. I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> does kind of open things up there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Mm. But I say, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall in no wise fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm. Yeah, I think this guy's in the closet. Yeah. 
Well, most of the time, anyway. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, for these things are opposed to one another, that not whatsoever ye wish ye should do, but if of the spirit ye are led, ye are not under law. Wait, what? Okay. Uh, okay, I'm confused. Yeah, I know. A little bit of cognitive dissonance there, eh? Just a... T- now manifest are the works of the flesh, which are fornication, uncleanness, and licentiousness. Oh, I gotta do the next couple of lines here, because it just flows. Idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strifes, jealousies, indignations, contentions, divisions, sects, and sects, like, not like Wow, wow, but yes, he see, yes. Envyings, drunkenness, revel, and such like, of which I previously tell you, even as also before, that they which do such things shall not inherit the ten- kingdom of God. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to leave off there. You can have this. Yeah. <laughs> But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts. This fucker is so into bondage. So, so into bondage. Oh, yeah. If we live in the Spirit, in the Spirit we should also walk. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking <coughs> one another, envying one another. <coughs> oh. <sighs> okay. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. <clears throat> For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But the work of himself let him prove. And then unto himself alone shall he have boasting, and not in another. Well, you know, that's pretty much all guys do. (laughs) For each shall bear their own burden. But let him that is taught in the world communicate unto him that teaches. Be, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. (laughs) <laughs> sure. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows unto the flesh from the flesh shall reap corruption, and he that sows unto the spirit from the spirit shall reap life in e- e- Eonian? Yeah. Uh, huh? Well, I, I, guess, I guess that's uh, what comes after or before yeah. Onanian. <laughs> no, it could be. But in well doing, we should not lose heart. Mm-hmm. And as we have opportunity, let us do good. For in due time we shall reap. Ye see how in large letters I have written unto you with mine own hand. And that is what everybody says is a key that. Um, one of Paul's letters is a fake because nobody would do that. No. Yeah. And Paul was illiterate um, as well, most likely. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Man, I am, I'm telling you, the fucking Caligula you know, mm-hmm. bondage, you know, some kind of weird kink where, you know, you, you know, your partner's got to be snipped before they can pound on you and all that. Uh, uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, where are we at? 13? Yep. 
For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. (laughs) But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. I think he was impaled, actually. (laughs) For the rest, let no one give in to me. You know, give to me troubles, for I bear the marks of Christ in my body. <laughs> <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brother, and amen. Oh. I need to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's... Man. That's some racy-ass shit. Yeah, buddy. Uh, oh my goodness after the ascension the apostle dispersed to preach in various countries Andrew began in the province of Achaia sounds good to me but Matthew went to the city of Myrmidona where's that where is Myrmidona never heard of them where all the the mermaids are (laughs) yeah or the Myrmidont the rest of one and the whole of two huh, gave a short act abstract of the acts of Andrew and Matthew, where Gregory either found prefixed to his copy of the acts of Andrew or thought himself obliged to notice because of the po- popularity of the story. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. Um... Okay, uh, Myrmidonia is unknown. Ooh. Wait a minute, I have to look this up because it mentions cannibalism. Ooh. Um. <laughs> Google Maps can't find Myrmidonia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the other place, Archaea, is Western Greece. Um, let me just do. Let me do this easy here. Can... Oh. So, uh, uh. Apparently, um, Matthias or Matthew, uh, maybe both, end up in a city of cannibals in Myrmidonia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Hopefully it'll be better than that one that um was supposed to be the inspiration for St. George and the Dragon and was just fucking stupid. Point. Okay. It's like a page. And I was like, really? Really? That's the big deal? Andrew left Myrmidonia and came back to his own allotted district. Walking with his disciples, he met a blind man who said, Andrew, Apostle of Christ, I know you can restore my sight, but I do not wish for that. (laughs) (laughs) Alms for next leper. Only bid those with you give to me enough money to clothe and feed myself decently. Alms for next leper. (laughs) Andrew said, This is the devil's voice who will not allow the man to recover his sight. He touched his eyes and healed him. Then as he had but a vile rough garment, Andrew said, take the filthy garment off him and clothe him afresh. All were ready to strip themselves, and Andrew said, let him have what will suffice him. He returned home thankful. Yeah. And here it comes. Demetrius of Amasia had an Egyptian boy of whom he was very fond who died of a fever. Demetrius, hearing of Andrew's miracle, came, fell at his feet, and besought help. Andrew pitied him, came to the house, held a very long discourse, turned to the buyer, raised the boy, and restored him to his master. All believed and were baptized. Miracles! Gotta be a miracle. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And Amasia is in Turkey, apparently. What's an Egyptian boy doing in Turkey? <laughs> I think you, you need to ask, what's an Egyptian boy doing in Demetrius? Mm-hmm. <laughs> a, a Christian lad named Sostratus came to Andrew privately and told him, My mother cherishes a guilty passion for me. I have repulsed her, and she has gone to the proconsul to throw the guilt on me. I would rather die than expose her. The officers came to fetch the boy, and Andrew prayed and went with him. The mother accused him. The proconsul bade him defend himself. He was silent, and so continued until the proconsul retired to take counsel. The mother began to weep. Andrew said, Unhappy woman, thou dost not fear to cast on thine own guilt on thy son? She said to the proconsul, Ever since my son entertained his wicked wish, he has been in constant company with this man. The proconsul was enraged ordered the lad to be sewn into the leather bag of parasites. Um, um, what's a parasite? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is, is that something that kills parrots? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> parasite. Killer of parrots. <clears throat> More commonly applied to killing you your father. And drowned in the river. And Andrew to be imprisoned till his punishment should be devised. Andrew prayed. There was an earthquake. The proconsul fell from his seat. Everyone was prostrated. And the mother withered up and died. The proconsul fell at Andrew's feet, praying for mercy. The earthquake and thunder ceased, and he healed those who had been hurt, even the mother. The proconsul and his house were baptized. Now, the uh, parasite is the killing of a parent yeah. or other near relative. <clears throat> so they have like a specific leather bag for that, apparently. News to me. Yeah, but th but this story that starts out with so, so Stratus, you know, mom wanting to jump his bones, that's something else that I've read in all this shit. I mean, besides the obvious connections to the story of Oedipus. Um, uh-huh. There's something else that I think we read it that was like that. Where the mother was, you know, pretty much hot for trotting with her kid. But I could be wrong. It's a thing, apparently. The son of Cretinus, Gratinus of Sinope, Sinope, bathed in the woman's bath and was seized by a demon. <laughs> Is that what you're calling it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was. Cratinus wrote to Andrew for help. He himself had a fever and his wife dropsy. <laughs> okay. More cowbell. Andrew went there in a vehicle. What he called an Uber or what? Mm. The boy tormented a but <laughs> a Honda? Yeah, they don't speak oh. of their own accord. Ah, I thought maybe it was a her or a Mazda. Uh, Whatever. Yeah. The boy, tormented by the evil spirit, fell at his feet. He bade it depart, and so it did without cries. He then went to Cratinus's bed and told him he well deserved to suffer because of his loose life, and bade him rise and sin no more. He was healed. The wife was rebuked for her infidelity. If she is to return to her former sin, let her not now be healed. If she can keep from it, let her be healed. The water broke out of her body and she was cured. The apostle broke bread and gave it to her. She thanked God, believed with all her house, and relapsed no more into sin. Cratinus afterwards sent Andrew great gifts by his servants, and then with his wife... <coughs> asked him in person to accept them, but he refused, saying, it is rather for you to give them to the needy. Oh, that's... that's... Oh, that's all right. Bad. Is that how you fix that biblically? Very good. After this, he went to Nicaea, where seven devils were lining up, were living among the tombs by the wayside, who at noon stoned passerby and had killed many. 
And all the city came out to meet Andrew with all of branches crying, Our salvation is in thee, O man of God. <coughs> when they had told him all, he said, If you believe in Christ, you shall be freed. They cried, We will. He thanked God and commanded the demons to appear. They came in the forms of dogs. Said he, These are your enemies. If you profess your belief that I can drive them out in Jesus' name, I will do so. They cried out, We believe that Jesus Christ, whom thou preachest, is the Son of God. Then he bade the demons go into dry and barren places. <clears throat> Sounds like one of my exes. And hurt no man till the last day. They roared and vanished. The apostle baptized the people and made Callistus bishop. Oh, so they got a promotion. Mm -hmm. So why'd she go to Arizona? <laughs> <In that. laughs> no. Utah? Uh, no, she's still around here somewhere, but that's mm, another story. <laughs> At the gate of Nicomedia, he met a dead man born on a buyer, and his old father supported by slaves, hardly able to walk, and his old mother with hair torn. Okay. Bewailing. How has it happened? He asked. He was alone in his chamber, and seven dogs rushed on him and killed him. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> uh, Andrew sighed and said, This is an ambush of the demons I banished from Nicaea. Huh? What? <laughs> uh huh. Unintended consequences. Uh -huh. What will you do, Father, if I restore your son? I have nothing more precious than him. I will give him, he prayed. Let the spirit of this lad return. The faithful responded, Amen. Andrew bade the lad rise, and he rose and all cried, Great is the God of Andrew. And parents offered great gifts, which he refused, but took the lad to Macedonia, instructing him. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, sure, buddy. <laughs> instructing him, Yeah, yes. that's what you call it these days. And we had a teacher like that at my kid's school, so... Mm -hmm. Had. Yeah. I'll take these next three, because they're all short, and then you can have 11, which is a big one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, 12's bigger. <laughs> they say size doesn't matter, but, you know... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not the ocean. Motion in the ocean. Yeah, right. Takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Embarking in a ship, he sailed into the Hellas Point on the way to Byzantium. There was a great storm. Andrew prayed and there was calm. They reached Byzantium. Woohoo! That was... It's a miracle. Yeah. Thence proceeding through Thrace, they met a troop of armed men who made as if to fall on them. Andrew made the sign of the cross against them and prayed that they might be powerless. A bright angel touched their swords, and they all fell down. So they're not weebles. And Andrew and his company passed by while they worshipped him. And the angel departed in a great light. So the guys on the ground are like, Oh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for saving us from killing you. Mm -hmm. I guess. At Perinthius, he found a ship going to Macedonia. And an angel told him to go on board. As he preached, the captain and the rest heard and were converted. And Andrew glorified God for making himself known on the sea. Uh -huh. Yes, Miller, we're all quite aware of your thoughts on seamen. <laughs> At Philippi... Philippi, were two brothers, one of whom had two sons, the other two daughters. They were rich and noble and said, There is no family as good as ours in the place. Let us marry our sons to our daughters. Oh, it was deep. Yeah, incest is best. Keep it in the family. Mm -hmm. It was agreed in the earnest paid by the father of the sons. On the wedding day, a word from God came to them. Wait till my servant Andrew comes. <clears throat> he will tell you what you should do. All preparations had been made and guests, guests had bidden, but they waited. On the third day, Andrew came. <laughs> and I want to point out, at this period of time, 
there was what's known as the the king's right. Uh, yes, yes, there was. Mm-hmm. <sighs> they went out to meet him with wreaths and told him how they had been charged to wait for him and how things stood. His face was shining, so that they marveled at him. He said, Do not, my children, be deceived. Rather, repent, for you have sinned in thinking to join together those who are near of kin. We do not forbid or shun marriage. This cannot be the author's original sentiment. It is contradicted by all that we know of the act. It is a divine institution, but we condemn incestuous unions. The parents were troubled and prayed for pardon. The young people saw Andrew's face like that of an angel and said, We are sure that your teaching is true. The apostle blessed them and departed. So you could just look at somebody and know they're telling the truth. The day's an angel. Oh, the, oh is that what's going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just reminded of that Henry Miller line, her hair washed in semen. (laughs) (sighs) At Thessalonica, Thessalonica, I guess, was a... Hmm? Thessalonica? Yeah. I think so. Sounds good to me. Was a rich, noble youth. Exus who came without his parents' knowledge and asked to be shown the way of the truth. He was taught and believed and followed Andrew, taking no care of his worldly estate. The parents heard that he was at Philippi and tried to bribe him with gifts to leave Andrew. He said, Would that you had not these riches, then you would know the true love of God and escape his wrath. Andrew, too, came down from the third story and preached to them. Wow. they He was living in a nice place if it had three floors at that time. But in vain. Oh, so the, God, the, the, the apostle failed. He retired and shut the doors of the house. They gathered a band and came to burn the house, saying, Death to the son who has forsaken his parents, and brought torches, reeds, and faggots. Those are bundles of wood, yeah, sticks and things. And set the house on fire. It blazed up. Exus took a bottle of water and prayed, Lord Jesu Christ, in whose hand is the nature of all the elements, who moistened the dry and driest the moist, coolest the hot and kindlest the quenched, put out this fire that thy servants may not grow evil but be more enkindled unto faith. He sprinkled the flames and they died. He has become a sorcerer, said the parents, and got ladders to climb up and kill them. But God blinded them. They remained obstinate. But one, Lysimachus, a citizen, said, Why persevere? God is fighting for these. Desist, lest heavenly fire consume you. They were touched and said, This is the true God. It was now night, but a light shone out, and they received sight. They went up and fell before Andrew and asked pardon, and their repentance made Lysimachus say, Truly, Christ whom Andrew preaches is the Son of God. That makes no sense. All were converted except the youth's parents. Okay, kind of sounded like they had been converted. Who cursed him and went home again, leaving all their money to public uses. wonder how they made their way home when being blind. Fifty days after they suddenly died, and the citizens who loved the youth returned the property to him. He did not leave Andrew, but spent his income on the poor. Oh, what a nice young boy. Yeah. <clears throat> Good thing they didn't kill him, huh? Yeah. The youth asked Andrew to go with him to Thessalonica, all assembled in the theater, glad to see their favorite. The youth preached to them, Andrew remaining silent, and all wondered at his wisdom. The people cried out, Save the son of Carpianus, who is ill, and we will believe. Carpianus went to his house and said to the boy, You shall be cured today, Adamantus, he said, but... Oh, 
Then my dream has come true. I saw this man in a vision healing me. He rose up, dressed, and ran to the theater, outstripping his father, and fell at Andrew's feet. The people seeing him walk after 23 years cried, There is none like the God of Andrew. Okay. So this guy has been paralyzed for, for 23, 23 years. years. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, um... Are you familiar with the, the, the law of fives? Uh, not specifically, no. I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, forget, forgive me, I don't remember all the details, but it comes from a... Well, no. it, com it no. comes from a couple of hippie texts. The first one is the Principia Discordia. Right. Or how I found the goddess Eris and what she did to me. Um which is real out there fun nutbaggery. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then there is the Illuminatus Trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shee, which is like a hippie version of Lord of the Rings set in the early 70s. Okay. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it, but, I, you know, it's... To the hippies of the time, it's sort of like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? And the Illuminatus trilogy, I found it when it was one book, but it's actually three. Um, but anyways, they have this, it's called the Law of Fives. And five, the numbers two and three, 23 and 32, are <clears throat> significant for reasons which I can no longer remember. Um... They're weird numerology stuff, right? Wilson and uh, she and the guy who wrote um, uh, the Principia Discordia, which was written in um, the office of the guy who was the nutter in New Orleans doing the investigation into the Kennedy assassination that uh, uh, R R Oliver Stone made uh, <clears throat> JFK about. Okay, well, I haven't watched that movie, so... Yeah. You haven't missed a lot. Um, but anyways, well, I shouldn't say that. It's a long film. But anyways, um, you know, 23 and 32 and 2 and 3 and 5 are really mystical in this philosophy. Of course they are. Because you, they combine in unique ways. And uh, somebody pointed out that um, if you play with the numbers 2 and 3 the right way, you can actually generate any number you can think of. And, well, yeah. and, and another thing that I will throw out um, is I know for a fact you, you, you've enjoyed something which was written by folks who were in on the joke. If you've ever seen an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, I've seen a few episodes of Star Trek. They always make a reference to the number 23. Every oh. episode. What's the Starbase uh, closest to have? Starbase 23. Mm. We're 23 light years away from this place. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's, and they've, I, there was an interview where they uh, mentioned that, yeah, you know, they, they made an oblique reference to it, and it was such that if you had read, you know, the Illuminatus Trilogy or Principia Discordia, you, uh, you, you knew they were specifically referencing those texts. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, just have to throw that out there for some reason. Random trivia. Yeah. A citizen had a son possessed by an unclean spirit and asked for his cure. The demon, foreseeing that he would be cast out took the son aside into a chamber and made him hang himself. Wow, that's really hurtful, man. Um, it's kind of dark, man. Wait, well, dude, my, my nephew that committed suicide was named Andrew. Oh. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, so that's, that's really dark. Um, the father said, bring him to the theater. I believe this stranger is able to raise him. He said the same to Andrew. Andrew said to the people, 
What will it profit you if you see this accomplished and do not believe? They said, Fear not, we will believe. The lad was raised, and they said, It is enough, we do believe. And they escorted Andrew to the house with torches and lamps, for it was night, and he taught them for three days. Now, in one of the Holy Blood, Holy Grail books, because there's four of them that I know of. There may be, well, and there's there's a quasi-fifth one. It's written independently by one of the authors of the other authors. Um, but but they he they make a case which um, even though a lot of their shit's nutbaggery um, is would is not um, it, it's not something you can easily just dismiss. Uh, like they talk about you know the death of Lazarus, they're saying that's like a religious initiation ritual, and that you know it was. It, he physically dead, and people of that time wouldn't have thought he was physically dead. It was part of the ritual. Um, and that actually ties in with uh, Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces, because, you know, there's um, always a kind of a death of the hero before they, you know, <laughs> in the process of completing their journey. Hmm. I don't know. They don't seem to raise a lot of dead people these days. No, well, they do, actually they kind of do um, compared to well, back then. Um, yeah, and there's a there's an English doctor who is fighting to change the protocols that hospitals use because he believes more people could be saved. Oh, and he's like we're missing something. Yeah, like only about fifteen percent of people who get CPR actually survive yep um and he he says what you know he says what they need to do is um because we can effectively we do this all the time actually we, we put people for short periods of time in suspended animation for things like open heart surgery yep and he's like you um you do that instead of performing cpr and then you figure out why their, you know, their heart's not working, and go from there. Rather than hmm. just, you know, he says you do CPR and such things for a period of time, and then you stop and put them in suspended animation. He's like anybody who's having a heart attack should immediately be put. Um, they've got it's a chilling blanket, is what it's called, I think. Yeah. And they should have if they're, you know, they should have that put on them. While they're sent to the, you know, they're being rushed to the hospital because that'll better their chances of survival. If, if the guys in the ambulance can't get their heart going. Interesting. And okay. there's there's other things along those lines. Um, <clears throat> I did not know that. Yeah. Although I did, no, I did uh, get a spiel from a nurse last year, year before, about. Well, they gave me all the information. 13% people who yeah. have a heart attack survive. Okay, great. Yeah. And um, heart attack? Just let me go. Yeah. Or, well, well um, the most, the, the one thing that, that really gets, seemed to get this guy is like, if somebody's, you know, appears to have died from hypothermia, he says, doesn't matter how long they've been quote unquote dead. You warm them up and try to bring them back. Yep. He says you're not dead until you're warm and dead. Yep. Yeah, it is possible. Medius of Philippi came and prayed for his sick son. Andrew wiped his cheeks and stroked his beard, saying, Be comforted, only believe, and went with him to Philippi. As they entered the city, an old man met them and entreated for his sons, whom, for an unspeakable crime, Medius had imprisoned, and they were putrefied with sores. <clears throat> Andrew said, How can you ask help for your sons when you keep these men bound? Loose their chains first, for your unkindness obstructs my prayers. Medius, penitent, said, I will loose these two and seven others of whom you have not been told. They were brought, tended for three days, cured and freed. Then the apostle healed the son. Philomedes, who had been ill twenty-two years, 
the people cried, heal our sick as well. Andrew told Philomedes to visit them in their houses and bid them rise in the name of Jesus Christ by which he had himself been healed. This was done, and all believed and offered gifts, which Andrew did not accept. Because he's funny, that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, at least he's not like the Pope who would take it at all. There we are. A citizen, Nicholas, offered a gilt chariot and four white mules and four white horses as his most precious possession for the cure of his daughter. Andrew smiled. I accept your gifts, but not these visible ones. If you offer this for your daughter, what will you for your soul? (laughs) That is what I desire you that the inner man may recognize the true God, reject earthly things, and desire eternal. He persuaded all to forsake their idols and heal the girl. His fame went through all Macedonia. Next day, as he taught, a youth cried out, What hast thou to do with us? Art thou come to turn us out of our own place? Andrew summoned him. What is your work? I have dwelt in this boy from his youth. <laughs> uh-huh. There we go. Yeah. And thought I'd never believe him. But three days since I heard your father say, I shall go to Andrew. And now I fear the torments thou bringest us, and I shall depart. The spirit left the boy, and many came and asked, In whose name dost thou cure our sick? Philosophers also came and disputed with him. And no one could resist his teaching. At this time, one who opposed him went to the proconsul Verunus and said, A man is arisen in the Thessalonica who says the temples should be destroyed and ceremonies done away, and all the ancient law abolished, and what God worshipped, whose servant he says he is. The proconsul sent soldiers and knights, I didn't think they had them then. To fetch Andrew, they found his dwelling. When they entered, his face shone so that they fell down in fear. Andrew told those present the proconsul's purpose. The people armed themselves against the soldiers, but Andrew stopped them. The proconsul arrived. Not finding Andrew in the appointed place, he raged like a lion and sent twenty more men. They, on arrival, were confounded and said nothing. The proconsul sent a large troop to bring him by force. Andrew said, Have you come for me? Yes, if you are the sorcerer who says the gods ought not to be worshipped. I am no sorcerer but the apostle of Jesus Christ whom I preach. At this, one of the soldiers drew his sword and cried, What have I, worship, or what have I to do with thee, Verinius? that thou sendest me to one who can not only cast me out of this vessel, but burn me by his power. What would that you would come yourself? You would do him no harm. And the devil sent out of the soldier, and he fell dead. Hmm. So did the devil die or the soldier die? And on this came the proconsul. and stood before Andrew, but could not see him. I am he whom thou seekest. His eyes were opened, and he said in anger, What is this madness that thou despises us and our officers? Thou art certainly a sorcerer. Now I, now will I throw thee to the base for contempt of our gods and us, and we shall see if the crucified whom thou preachest will help thee. Andrew, Thou must believe, proconsul, in the true God and his son whom he hath sent. Especially now that one of thy men is dead. Okay, so you did die. And after a long prayer, he touched the soldier. Rise up, my God, Jesus Christ, raiseth thee. He arose and stood whole. The people cried, Glory to be our God, the proconsul. Believe not, O people, believe not the sorcerer. They said, This is no sorcery. 
but sound in true teaching. The proconsul, I shall throw this man to the beasts and write about you to Caesar that ye may perish for condemning his laws. They would have stoned him and said, Write to Caesar that the Macedonians have received the word of God and forsaking their idols, worship the true God. God damn. Then the proconsul in wrath retired to the praetorium. And in the morning he brought beasts to the stadium and had the apostle dragged thither by the hair and beaten with clubs. First they sent in a fierce boar who went about him thrice and touched him not. The people praised God. A bull led by thirty soldiers and incited by two hunters did not touch Andrew but tore the hunters to pieces, roared and fell dead. Christ is the true God, said the people. An angel was seen to descend and strengthen the apostle. The proconsul in rage sent a fierce leopard, which left everyone alone but seized and strangled the proconsul's son. But Verinius was so angry that he said nothing of it nor cared. Andrew said to the people, Recognize now that this is the true God whose power subdues the beasts, though Verinius knows him not. But that ye may believe the more, I will raise the dead son and confound the foolish father. And after one prayer he raised him. The people would have slain Verinius, but Andrew restrained them, and Verinius went to the praetorium confounded. Wait, didn't that kid get killed by the guy? Mm-hmm. <sighs> and then Andrew brought him back from the dead. That's crazy. Oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, here we go. After this, a youth who followed the apostle sent for his mother to meet Andrew. She came, <clears throat> and after being instructed, begged him to come to their house, which was devastated by a great serpent. I, I want to point out that at this period of time, women were not allowed to come. Uh, no. <laughs> Nobody cared. <laughs> As Andrew approached, it hissed loudly, and with a raised head came to meet him. It was fifty cubits long. Everyone fell down in fear. Andrew said, Hide thy head, foul one, which thou didst raise in the beginning for the hunt of mankind, and obey the servants of God and die. The serpent roared and coiled about a great oak nearby, and vomited poison and blood and died. Andrew went to the woman's farm, where a child, killed by the serpent, lay dead. He said to the parents, Our God, who, who would have you saved, hath... Our God, who would have you saved, hath sent me here, that you may believe on him. Go and see the slayer slain. They said... We care not so much for the child's death if we be avenged. They went, and Andrew said to the proconsul's wife, her conversion had been omitted by Gregory, go and raise the boy. She went, nothing doubting, and said, in the name of my God Jesus Christ, rise up whole. The parents returned and found the child alive and fell at Andrew's feet. Mm -hmm. Wow, so he killed a giant serpent. Yeah. Which could have been a dragon. Because that, that those were kind of interchangeable terms back then. I suppose. That's it for this episode of The Atheist in the Trailer Park Podcast. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, as well as just about anywhere else podcasts can be found. Many of the episodes are also on YouTube. Follow the show on Twitter. At T Park Atheist is the show's Twitter handle. It's on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash trailerparkatheist.com. If you happen to like the podcast, please rate it on iTunes. If you'd like to support the podcast, there's a donate button on the show notes page. You can support it via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash TN Tucker. Thanks for listening. Say goodnight, Fuzznuts. All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. Damned cat.